Hello. One of the region's former Euro MPs is in prison tonight, convicted of fiddling his expenses. 61-year-old Tom Wise was elected to the European Parliament as a member of UKIP before he became an independent. He's thought to be the first British politician to be sent to prison for an expenses fiddle. He was found guilty of dishonestly claiming £39,000. Much of the money went on fine wines, a car and credit card debts. Let's get the full story now from Nicky Jenkins. Thank you, Stuart. Well, I'm in Leighton Buzzard. It was just around the corner from the high street that Tom Wise had his constituency office. It was there that Bedfordshire Police came in 2007 to arrest him. It's a little bit like living in a parallel universe, you know. Uh, an elected member of a parliament fiddles his expenses, gets caught, apologises, pays the money back. But in this version, he's tried for fraud and goes to prison for it. 2004 and Tom Wise was a newly elected MEP, a rising star in a growing party. Just three months after this, he did a deal with Lindsay Jenkins, a political researcher. She signed on the dotted line, he filled in the blanks. Instead of paying her £500 a month, he claimed £3,000 direct into his own bank account, netting £2,500 a month in profit. When he was caught, the total stood at £39,000. But across the five years' term, it's very conservatively estimated that he'd have pocketed 100000 The defence had tried to argue that there was a certain ambiguity surrounding this allowance and that among certain sections of UKIP and the wider parliament, there was a culture of playing fast and loose with expenses. The judge rejected that. He said Wise had barely got his feet under the table before he began defrauding both the parliament and the people who voted for him. Mr Wise has abused his position as an elected representative. His conviction for false accounts confirms that he has now used taxpayers' money to feather his own nest, and this includes spending £39,000 on personal luxuries such as a car and wine. First-class wine and a second-hand car. The money also went on credit cards and UKIP campaigns. Roger Knapman, UKIP leader at the time, gave a character reference in court, but today the party is less supportive. Well, it's sad. He let the party down very badly. Um, I was there in court to hear him plead guilty, uh, just observing. He's, he's let us down very badly and, um, you know, let justice take its course. And the course of that justice will be two years prison sentence, at least 12 months inside, and repaying £30,000 in costs. The question still remains why exactly he did this. It is alleged that he joked it was all in line with UKIP policy of getting UK taxpayers' money out of Europe. But if it was part of a wider culture of um, expenses abuse, then he may feel rightly maligned this evening that he's the only one paying the price. Nicky, thank you very much. It now looks as if two cousins from Essex, Luke Atkinson and Michael Binnington, will be extradited to Cyprus by the end of this week, where they will be taken to prison to serve a sentence for manslaughter. For almost two years, the cousins have been fighting extradition to Cyprus. In August 2006, Christos Papyrus was killed when his moped was hit by a car. It was driven by Julian Harrington. Six months later, he was sentenced to 15 years for killing him. Michael and Luke, who were passengers in the car, were acquitted and returned home to Essex. Then the Cypriot Supreme Court overturned that verdict, saying they were guilty of conspiring to cause manslaughter and sentenced them in their absence to three years. In January, a district judge in London ruled they should be extradited to Cyprus. In May, that was upheld in the Court of Appeal, and this week, the UK's Supreme Court turned down their final appeal. Today in London, Michael Binnington and Luke Atkinson met with their solicitor, having just found out their final appeal against extradition has failed. Within 48 hours, they'll have to turn themselves into police. By Saturday, they could be in a Cypriot jail. This country won't look into the actual case at all. All they're interested in is the political side of it, keeping all the uh, EU countries happy together, looking after each other. They're, they're not really, they don't seem interested in what happened in the case or us, to be honest. So, yeah, we feel very let down. Both our mums are so upset. It's, you, I can't explain how upset they are right now. You know, they're gutted. You know, they've got a, they're, you know, they're looking at not seeing their sons for, you know, for possibly three years, and it's just, you know, no, no mother should have to, have to face that. 
Following a brawl at a nightclub, the pair had got into a car driven by Luke's uncle, Julian Harrington. It then hit a moped. Christos Papiris, who had nothing to do with the earlier incident, was killed. Emotions ran high at the men's original trial. Friends and family of the 17-year-olds were outraged that the cousins had been acquitted, convinced the two had egged on Harrington to hit the teenager's moped. Those accused always maintained it was a tragic accident. The whole extradition treaties that we, were, we are a party to need to be overhauled and reviewed. Um, the boys' parents summed it up this afternoon when they said our government protects others before they protect their own, and that's exactly what's happening. It's likely that Binnington and Atkinson will be repatriated after six months to serve the remainder of their three-year sentence in the UK. After a two-year fight against extradition, this really looks like the end game for Michael Binnington and Luke Atkinson. On Friday evening, they'll come here to Belgravia Police Station where they'll surrender themselves. And we understand they're likely to be put on a flight to Cyprus the same evening. It's there they'll serve their jail sentences. Felicity Simper, BBC Look East in London. Well, let's talk to the Euro MP Richard Howitt, who's been advising the family throughout the legal process. He's in Brussels now. Uh, wh why are you unhappy with the, the fact that these two are going back to serve their sentence? Well, firstly, Michael and Luke are my constituents in Whitham. Uh, I've got to know them and their families very well. I utterly believe them when the, they say they were completely out of it in the back seat of a car when a tragic road accident took place. I completely believe them when they say that they were, that having been acquitted in the lower court in Cyprus, told they could walk free, and that when the Supreme Court was due to simply confirm that decision, and there was no question of anything other than, uh, in the worst instance, referring it back to the lower courts, that they then found out that they'd been found guilty in absence without being able to put their own defence, and then finally the indignity of being told that and told that they were facing a three-year jail sentence by text message to their mobile phones. I'm as angry and as devastated as they are and their families are tonight. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but judges here, the Appeal Court, the Supreme Court, everybody sees nothing wrong with it. So, so I'm, I'm at pains to find out why you think that our courts are wrong and they are right. Well, I agree with what the boys and our solicitor has said, that at no stage has the British judicial system been prepared to look at the merits of the case uh, and uh, any common sense view that says if you weren't driving the car, if you weren't able to put your defence, if you weren't able to even have the verdict delivered in person, then justice has not been done. And the truth is that that court in Larnaca took place in the wake of this tragic road accident. No one is happy this man was killed. Uh, that there was huge jostling and pressure in the courtroom as you, you've just shown that everyone here believes that that put undue pressure on the local Mr. court Howard. in Cyprus and at no stage either in Cyprus or in Britain has this biased decision ever been uh, looked at objectively or fairly. Mr Howitt, sorry to interrupt you but thank you very much for being with us this evening.